What is voice over IP? In general, voice over IP encompasses apps that have voice calling and voice calling devices at your home that are not connected to your telephone carrier. As it turns out, the misunderstanding of this technology starts there. Most don't understand how it works and its threats. There are hardware and software variations. Some run only as apps like WhatsApp, Signal, Skype, and Viber. Some are hardware based like Uma and Magic Jack. Some are open source front ends that connect to centralized servers like Linphone. Some connect to private central servers using Asterisk. But each platform runs differently and are typically heavily regulated by their home country. Hardware supporting voice over IP like routers are also built with features for surveillance. Not all voice over IP are the same, but maybe then again, they are. This whole infrastructure serves a massive surveillance database, probably captured in multiple countries. Do you need to worry? It depends on who your threats are. You want to understand this complex landscape? Stay tuned. I'm on the platform odyssey.com and now I'm now one of the top creators on there. Just for insurance, in case I get the platform, please follow me there using the link in the description. I have a VPN service, Bytes VPN. My company also sells the Google phones and VPN routers. These products are made to make your identity disappear on the internet. If you're interested in them, they are on my app, BraxMe. The link is in the description. In general, voice calls are a big privacy hole. Maybe it's a historic thing since the days of the telegraph, but voice calling has always been a target of surveillance by all governments. Spoiler alert, frankly, in today's world, the more you use text communications using encrypted apps, then the safer you will be. The less voice, the better. But we can't escape voice calling, so let's dig into this so we understand what we're getting into each time we talk into our phones. Today, there are two ways to do voice calling. The old way was over the public switch telephone network, PSTN. This is the network that gives us our phone number. The alternate way, which you can say can coexist with PSTN, is voice over IP. Voice over IP runs completely over an IP network, like an internet or even a local area network. Voice over IP, however, doesn't use public phone numbers since it is a completely independent infrastructure. You can, however, make a voice over IP device connect to the PSTN using a PSTN gateway. And this will then give you access to a phone number, which can then be used to make outgoing and incoming calls to the PSTN. What is interesting though, is that voice over IP devices can talk to each other without PSTN. This is not that new of a concept for anyone on an old office PBX system. You can dial by some extension. Most businesses have shifted by now to the cheaper voice over IP solution for running a phone system instead of the old PBX hardware. So voice over IP is very well used in voice calling and likely you yourself may be using voice over IP quite often. In the USA, the PSDN is managed by our standard phone carriers, AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile. Since the old days, wiretapping at your local carrier office was the common way law enforcement listened in to criminal suspects. Since 1994, in the USA, voice carriers were required to support CALIA, the Communications Assistance for Law Enforcement Act. In general terms, the CALIA law requires that the PSTN carriers allow for wiretapping of any targeted individual designated by law enforcement. Wiretapping over PSTN is not meant to be done on site, by the way. Digitally, a bridge is made to the law enforcement agency to listen into a desired voice call. So a copy of the voice traffic is sent over an alternate VPN network of the law enforcement agency. Kalia was expanded to now include voice over IP carriers, although most of the actual wiretapping still occurs over on the PSTN side. There are exceptions for voice over IP compliance with Kalia warrants. In general, any communication that reaches to the public is subject to Kalia, so any access to the public switch telephone network, PSTN, is included. What is not included are private voice over IP and PBX systems used in business and internal communications. 
in plain speak, if your voice over IP device is not reaching out to a public phone number, then you are not subject to Kalia. If the voice over IP provider is not charging a fee, then they're also not subject to Kalia. You can, for example, use a voice over IP app called Linphone that connects to other Linphones. They connect to each other by having a server manage the signaling and the ringing. The voice over IP protocol used in signal management is called SIP, Signal Initiation Protocol. And so voice over IP apps like Linphone run a SIP server. SIP servers do not necessarily go to the public switch telephone network. Each phone is registered on a SIP server and that allows communications between all phones registered to that SIP server. Linphone SIP servers are in Europe. Linphone doesn't go to a PSDN. Second, they are not based in the United States, so are not subject to USA laws, so they can bypass Kalia. However, as you will learn later, this does not offer any particular protection to Linphone and others like it, like Asterisk. Asterisk is another example of a voice over IP product. However, in this case, Asterisk is nothing more than a SIP server you can install on-premise. You can set up your own voice over IP network and being private, you're also not subject to Kalia even though you're in the USA. Asterisk software is free and can be installed on Linux computers like a small Raspberry Pi. Now, asterisks can be connected to the PSTN so your phones can have normal phone numbers. This is done by a PSTN gateway provider. Basically, any voice over IP provider can be hooked onto a PSTN gateway and then you can reach the normal public phone numbers. These are typically paid services. So, SIP is then funneled into a PSTN network through some gateway provided over the internet. Another kind of voice over IP provider are those that provide you with hardware and then you can connect to the PSTN network pretty much automatically. This is because the primary purpose of these voice over IP providers is to provide PSTN service. Examples of these are UMA and Magic Jack. So the hardware itself is just a one way voice over IP connection to the UMA or Magic Jack server, but it is a simple connection over to the PSTN. They are basically landline replacements. Now back to the Kalia law. Since UMA and Magic Jack provide you with a phone number, then the Kalia wiretapping can be done at the PSTN side. You are no different than any landline or mobile phone as far as Kalia is concerned. Products like Asterisk only get covered by Kalia when they make a connection to the PSTN. And again, the Kalia wiretapping happens at the PSTN side since there would be a phone number. Now, this would imply that voice calling over voice over IP only, like a Lint phone that does not connect to the PSTN, same as private corporate voice over IP networks using asterisk internally, would in theory not have a capture point for Kalia. You would think this is some oversight that three letter agencies won't have access to your voice over IP data, which is a huge amount of traffic nowadays since people have basically abandoned the old PBX systems at most businesses. You will understand that there is no oversight. The government, plural, can in fact listen to all standard voice over IP. And to explain this, let me tell you how voice over IP works. Each voice over IP phone that needs to communicate with other voice over IP phones typically registers with a SIP server and that allows people to find each other automatically as long as you're all registered to the same SIP server. How you're assigned a SIP phone number is up to each SIP server, but in the end, a SIP number is used to translate to IP addresses for both phones. Without a SIP server, each voice calling device will need to know the IP address of the phone it's trying to call. And this can be practically impossible if you're not on the same local network and of course beyond the skills of the average person. So in the voice over IP world, the phones have to signal each other to ring and exchange IP addresses. This is coordinated by a SIP server. The SIP server, as I mentioned, can be local or it can be centralized elsewhere like the Linphone example where the servers are in France and Germany. After signaling over SIP, on a standard voice over IP system, the voice communications are generally peer-to-peer, -peer, meaning no central office for voice. 
But even this is not entirely true, and we'll get back to this. Assuming your device is on the same network, the standard way to exchange the actual voice traffic is with a protocol called RTP, Real-Time Transport Protocol. Well, one interesting thing about RTP is that it is not encrypted. Thus, in general, no voice over IP communications using the standard protocols of SIP and RTP are encrypted. Where this comes to play is with something called internet sniffing. Part of the CALEA law requires that internet last mile providers allow the sniffing of traffic, in particular, RTP traffic. In fact, some of this is built right into the routers themselves. This is in fact the lawful intercept feature built into many of the Cisco routers. So if desired, RTP traffic can be listened to at all times over the network that you are traversing and the traffic is copied and forwarded to an alternate network. And this gets even more blurry. Most devices are behind a NAT in a home system or even corporate system. In other words, you do not have a public IP address other than the router connected to the internet. A router manages your local IP addresses and does a network address translation, NAT, when you need to go to the internet. This prevents direct peer-to-peer -peer communications between two voice over IP devices using RTP. The solution to this is a relay server. There's often an internet located server that does this relay. The relaying of the actual RTP traffic is called a turn server, traversal using relay NAT. The SIP signaling also will have issues. Without an IP address, some way has to be made to pass signaling. And this is done with another external server called the STUN server, Session Traversal Utilities for NAT, or it was originally called Session Traversal UDP for NAT. Again, to simplify this, stun servers are needed over the internet to handle user signaling behind a NAT, like home users. And turn servers are used to relay the actual voice data behind a NAT. In plain talk, what I'm saying is that if you're talking to someone over the internet using voice over IP, whether you like it or not, unless you're at the same location, it is not peer to peer. Some server somewhere will have it centralized and performing a relay, and thus that is where it can be intercepted. So whether you like it or not, any PSDN communications or standard voice over IP communications can be captured by government either directly or over the internet or over the phone carrier switch network, and obviously captured by the carrier as well. Let's go into another level of voice over IP, which in fact cannot be sniffed by a government through the normal means. Instead of standard voice over IP, which is using the protocols SIP for signaling and RTP for voice, some platforms have modified this and thus have managed to encrypt the voice traffic and also have their own private signaling. I'll give you the popular ones, Skype, WhatsApp, Viber, and Signal. These apps do not use standard voice over IP, Although we refer to the technology with the same name, it runs completely differently. Let's start with Skype, which is the most popular and which is owned by Microsoft. Skype has its own proprietary Skype protocol. It is closed source, so only Skype can talk to Skype. Using their own techniques, the actual voice traffic is encrypted on transport. So it would not be possible to sniff voice traffic over the internet like with standard RTP. However, Skype is centralized. They can actually listen in to any conversation they want at Skype Central, the same as any phone carrier. And in fact, Skype was an active participant in the prison program of the National Ducking Agency as revealed by Snowden. So this was a source of metadata in addition to the normal telephone carriers of every conversation. Surprisingly, when I interviewed John McAfee, who was wanted by the US government, he used Skype with me. I realized that interview is public anyway, so there was nothing secret about it, but I've always wondered about the signaling of connections, which it has to have. Something like SIP, and that would have some metadata of IP addresses that could have been followed. John McAfee likely used a special way of hiding his IP address that I cannot use. His method would not be legal in the USA, but it is something that many hackers use. It's not a VPN in case you're wondering. 
My point is that normal people cannot hide their metadata using Skype. Now let's compare this to Viber. Viber is not that popular in the USA, but it's often used in other countries for phone calling. Viber originally came from Israel but it has been acquired by a Japanese firm and now it is officially located in Luxembourg. Viber does not use standard voice over IP and it is also encrypted, but the encryption is only at the transport level, just like Skype. Perhaps they use a protocol called WebRTC, which is used for voice and video in browsers and has built in TLS encryption. But let's be clear, just like Skype, Viber Central should be able to listen to any call and text. It is not end-to-end -end encrypted. However, the difference is that Viber is not based in the USA, so it is not subject to compliance to the Patriot Act, which would have forced surveillance by the National Zucking Agency. But don't presume Viber is safe at all. Though the USA may not be able to listen to Viber, anyone can for the right price or the right motives. All calls can be intercepted. The Israeli origins alone should make you wonder. It's sometimes about the devil you know. The Russians love Viber. Americans probably stick to Skype, so we choose our devils. Though, we may want to try opposite day. Of the four popular voice over IP apps I mentioned, the apps WhatsApp and Signal would be similar when it comes to voice calling. WhatsApp partnered with the original developer of Signal, which was Open Whisper Systems, to use end-to-end -end encryption on messaging. And from my understanding, Signal uses some modified WebRTC to handle voice and video, so end-to-end -end encryption was added. WhatsApp claim end-to-end -end encryption of voice calling as well. Both Signal and WhatsApp would not have a central listening post for voice traffic. But in spite of the similarity, definitely you would prefer Signal over WhatsApp, no question. Although the technology in theory is similar, WhatsApp has extremely serious metadata issues because it is a Facebook platform. It is clearly stated in the terms of service of Facebook and Facebook properties. Even though Facebook may not be listening to the actual phone conversation, all metadata relating to the call is captured intentionally and all identities of the callers are then matched with the metadata to Facebook accounts. In case you forgot, Facebook requires your real identity and it is crowd verified. This verified identity is the biggest danger with Facebook properties. You are not communicating in secret with WhatsApp. Zuck is tracking any move you make. I'm certain that Zuck has the ability to blackmail people having secret trysts and even private business communications just from knowing who's talking to whom and when. The Signal Foundation, by the way, was funded by Brian Acton, who co-founded WhatsApp. As I said, the technology used for end-to-end -end encryption in WhatsApp came from Signal. Then when he left WhatsApp, he put money into the Signal Foundation, which he now heads. Let's get back to Signal itself and the actual technology of the voice call. Signal does not interact with the PSDN or phone carriers, so they are not subject to the Kalia law. Additionally, Signal being encrypted is not required to provide a decryption method if they don't have a decryption key. So in all these four apps I mentioned, there's no possibility of listening in to a voice calling in transit. However, Skype and Viber have the capability to listen to anything in HQ. All collect large amounts of metadata about who is calling whom, except for Signal. Now, Signal is not perfect either. Just like any communications method that has to deal with NAT, it will need a relay. So that's where the metadata could possibly leak by tracking activity at the turn and stun servers. This is likely a very small risk, but I have to mention it just in case. It is likely not an agent for mass surveillance. So to summarize the voice over IP options, standard voice calling using a phone carrier is no different than voice over IP when it comes to possible surveillance. There are very limited options and frankly, although Signal is the only one that is the safest option on my list, the reality is that even Signal has metadata that bothers me. The main problem with apps like Signal and other messaging platforms is that they use a phone number and that alone is metadata that is traceable. Thus, it is possible to identify who's talking to whom. Signal guards this data as much as they can, so it is partially protected. In theory, Signal uses a hash instead of the actual phone number 
for signaling. But anyone with knowledge of cybersecurity knows that there are a limited number of phone numbers, so a rainbow table of hashes could be generated anyway. In other words, it is always possible to derive a phone number. Also, as Signal users know, if someone you know starts using Signal, you get a notification. So these hashes are announced on the network. In fact, I can scan through my normal phone contact list and be able to tell who has Signal, even though I never contacted them using Signal before. This is something that Signal has to fix. In my judgment, I would only use Signal with people I already know, people who already have my phone number, since it's not a secret anymore. If some three-letter agency generates a relationship map based on phone number hashes, then it will associate me with people I already know. I may want to start a new phone number and use a separate phone for talking to others I don't know, but only for short-term use. Or not use voice at all if I can avoid it. Now let's talk about the mass surveillance aspect of voice calling, which encompasses voice over IP. Part of the capture of data using Kalia includes capturing metadata and actual voice traffic as needed by law enforcement. As it turns out, this data is collected in a centralized Zucking BI database called DCSNet. Using a point and click interface, Zucking BI staff can track traffic over SMS, voice over IP, and PSDN for any target person by using this central database. And this in itself is a subset of an even larger database kept by the National Zucky Agency at the Utah Data Center. And this again includes all the metadata and of all calls made in the world that it can collect. This database in part included the PRISM program which Snowden revealed and included at the time every conversation on Skype and every telephone carrier. We have to assume that this continues today and is tracked with willing participants from big tech. In addition, I've already told you that RTP traffic in itself, which is the standard voice over IP protocol for voice, is easily captured. There's a program which Snowden discussed but doesn't have a lot of detail, and this is called voice printing. Basically, Snowden said that we have all been voice printed if we have used any of the standard communication methods for voice calling, and I presume anything found in social media. As I already described, it is extremely easy for government to capture our voices through the various listening posts I've already described. RTP sniffing, direct support of companies like Skype, and then Kalia compliant PSTN carriers. Voice printing allows a national zucking agency to recognize a voice immediately from its use on any voice calling infrastructure. So without any further metadata, they can basically isolate any call occurring pretty much anywhere after hearing a voice. There's some filter on these listening posts to listen for targeted voice prints. I assume this is the basis for finding locations of the Osama bin Ladens or the Mohammed Omars, or basically anyone who's a target. By law, the National Zucking Agency supposedly has limitations on what data it collects from USA citizens, including voice. But if voice printing data on each and every one of us is kept by a private company and just accessed by three-letter agencies, then they can bypass these supposed laws to protect us. It also worries me that companies like Amazon, Apple, and Google through voice command devices like Echo, Siri, Cortana, Google Assistant are able to store our voices and our voice prints. And basically, they have the ability to make those fingerprints available to three-letter agencies and the matching device identities. And even on top of this, I can assure you that the Zucking IA has created duplicate databases that capture independent information on voice data and metadata that I'm certain includes all US citizens. So in general, anything voice related is part of this whole surveillance infrastructure that is amazingly robust and ensures that you will have no place to hide if they want to get you. So is this a threat for you personally? For the typical conformist citizen, likely not. But for the non-conformist, the activist, the journalist, the politician, and maybe even for a YouTuber like me delving into deep topics like this, it can be a threat. We don't have to be terrorists to be concerned. If someone in power doesn't like what we say, we can be targeted. Unfortunately, in today's world, the non-conformists comprise a big chunk of the population. I'm not suggesting any action with this video, just for all of you to be aware of our environment. 
If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Growing this channel is important to grow the message for all. Thank you for those who support me on Patreon and those who buy my products. Talk to you again next week.